Hi, Kathy. I came on a couple of minutes early because it takes people to get a couple of, uh, takes a couple of minutes for people to get on. So I'm just going to sit here uh, and I'm actually drinking tea. It's 100 degrees out and I'm drinking hot tea because I've been drinking hot tea for 50 years. <laughs> And I just can't not drink hot tea in the afternoon. What can I tell you? Just You can take the boy out of England, but you can't take England out of the boy. So, hi everybody. It is uh, 5 o'clock on the west coast of the United States here in beautiful Westlake Village, California. Uh, which, for those of you who don't know where that is, it is about halfway between uh, Los Angeles proper and Santa Barbara up the coast. Uh, this is Neil Palachi with the Wealth Creator Company for Women. I am a women's money coach uh, working primarily, almost exclusively, uh, with separated, uh, divorced and widowed women. Hi, Barbara. Good to see you. And uh, today I'm going to talk to you about business entities and the different kinds of business entities uh, that are available and which ones you might want to use. Now, before I do that, I do want to give a shout out to me. Uh, I want to just tell you all about uh, our um, uh, Neil's Deals website. So if you go to www Deals, N-E-I-L-Z or Z. D-E-A-L-Z or Z, uh, then uh, dot com. So N-E-I-L-Z, D-E-A-L-Z dot com. Uh, you will, uh, from time to time, probably weekly, receive various deals uh, that I find out in the marketplace and that people bring to me. So if you have uh, deals and seed deals, I don't care what they are, cars, paper, Pens, computers, uh, somebody writing an estate plan, legal advice. I don't really care what it is, mortgages and so forth. Uh, let me know about it because I want to just put it out there and I want this to be something uh, different. I don't, you know, don't want to just give you kind of the discount on the, the, the latest uh, cell phone. and Although you will get some of that, but I want to give you some different stuff. So uh, you'll find some really good stuff uh, if you subscribe. And there's something special from me on there uh, that you will get a free report and so forth. So take advantage of that at neilsdeals.com. So let me tell you a little bit about business entities and uh, the choices that you have and why you might want to use one over another and so forth. So I would imagine uh, that all of you have heard of and know about to some degree sole proprietorships, partnerships, LLCs and corporations. So what are the differences and when would you use one over the other? So for instance, sole proprietorship. So sole proprietorship would be uh, Neil Palachi, DBA, doing business as the Wealth Creator Company for Women. So anytime as you as an individual are just in business for yourself, uh, essentially, you're supposed to file a DBA at doing business as. It depends on the city, the county, the state. Everybody has slightly different rules. But nevertheless, that's the sole proprietorship. And you're essentially on your own. You're one person. You can have an employee. That doesn't matter. It's But it's a one ownership, non-corporate, non-partnership, non-LLC business. Uh, and it's advantageous. It's advantageous because it basically costs nothing to do, nothing to run. You file a Schedule C on your 1040, which essentially is a profit and loss statement, and that's it. I mean, I don't know, 20 bucks to add a Schedule C to your, to your uh, tax return is no big deal. Now, the downside is everything's up for grabs. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean... Hey, if you do something wrong and somebody gets pissed off and they sue you, even though they're suing your business, they're saying, hey, I don't like what you did for me in business, and they sue you, 
then everything you own personally is up for grabs. Yeah, they come after you. They say, oh, you know, I'm going to sue you for $250,000. They could theoretically uh, take your house. They could take your car. They could take your bank account because none of that is held separately. So it's all up for grabs. So that's the downside of using a sole proprietorship, but it is the simplest, it is the cheapest, uh, and uh, certainly it can be advantageous. So look out for the potential liability of that and consider that uh, and then uh, determine whether or not that or something else might be better. Now, when you move up, if you will, for use of a better term, when you go to partnership, it's almost the same, but now you've got at least one other person involved in your business. So you have a partner. You could have two or three or four, but you have a partner, and now essentially you're both liable, and you could potentially each be liable for 100% of anything that anybody else does, and your personal assets are still on the hook. So there isn't a heck of a lot of protection there either, but it is pretty simple to put together, and you'll get at the end of the year what they call a K-1. The partnership will you know, have a separate uh, bank account and so forth, and we'll see the money coming in and out, and the partnership made a profit, and that profit split evenly between the two partners if you're a 50-50 partner. And you'll get a K-1 indicating what that amount of money is, and you'll add that to your tax return. Again, a K-1 costs some money to do. You should have a CPA do that. But um, you will add that to your regular 1040 tax return, so it's a fairly inexpensive way to do things. But again, it does leave open some liability issues, and you've certainly got to take that into consideration. So then we move into the LLC and the corporations. Now, the LLC has become very popular because it's pretty simple to do as well. Um, it doesn't typically require a heck of a lot of additional paperwork. It doesn't require board meetings and some of the other things that corporations provide and require, rather. Um, but it does give you that layer of liability protection, LLC, Limited Liability Company, and as a result, it kind of works like a sole proprietorship in a sense, but it gives you a level, a layer of protection so that if somebody comes after you, they can't get to your personal assets. Now, there are always mistakes that people make, and maybe those mistakes will allow somebody to pierce that veil, in other words, get through that liability protection and get to your personal assets. But in general, the personal assets are not on the table, only the assets that are actually owned by that LLC. And again, the filings are relatively simple. Uh, it doesn't require a separate tax return, etc. So there are some um, real advantages to doing an LLC. There are some gross revenue taxes that come into play when you have many hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of revenue, and you do need to be aware of that if you're going to get to those kind of numbers. And remember, everything that I'm telling you is very general. I don't know exactly what's going to apply to you, and I want to make sure that you are talking to your accountant, to your CPA, to your attorney to discuss which of these would work best for you because everybody's situation is unique. I'm certainly not a lawyer or a CPA. Um, I, I am just a mere money coach, but I know a fair amount about this stuff. And then I'm going to team up with a lawyer uh, and or an accountant uh, to make those decisions for myself, <coughs> excuse me, and to help my clients make those decisions. So it's a team effort, but these are the basics. Now, when you move up to the corporate world, you now have the C Corp, uh, the regular corporation, vanilla corporation, uh, and uh, you are uh, just like any other corporation. You, you're, you got a corporation just like McDonald's has a corporation, or Microsoft or Walmart has a corporation. You now have the same kind of corporation as they do. Now, you can make a decision 
when you fill out your paperwork uh, to elect to have a subchapter S corporation. So people will say, well, do you have an S or do you have a C corporation? And they do work differently. So when you leave your business as a C corporation, by the way, they both have the same level of liability protection, uh, minimally different than the LLC, but pretty much the same. Um, and, and again, it can be pierced in, in some situations, but for the most part, your personal assets are off the table, and that's important to know. So um, when you have a C corporation, though, the big difference, so a couple of the big differences are the C corporation uh, provides for a truly separate entity, not only from a legal perspective, but also from a tax perspective. So it actually has its own taxable income. Now, sometimes you say, well, the money, 100 grand goes in and 100 grand comes out. You know, so there is no taxable income because the corporation, what they call zeros out. Put 100 grand came in in revenues. I took out you know, $75,000 salary and $25,000 was necessary to pay rent and phones and other expenses. And therefore, everything in the corporation was spent. I have a zero net income in the corporation. I have to file that tax return. Um, but, you know, there is no tax to be paid because there is no, uh, there is no income, a net income. Uh, so now... When I have an S corporation, it works a little differently in that if there is any income, that income is going to flow through to me personally. There's not going to be a separate tax status for the income, the net income of that corporation. Where So if you have, let's compare a C and an S real quick. If you have a C corporation that makes 100 grand, and you take out 60 grand salary and 20 grand in expenses and there's 20 grand left, there's $20,000 of profit that is going to be taxed at the corporate level. It's going to, that 20 grand is going to stay in the corporation and is going to be taxed as corporate income at whatever tax rate that 20 grand puts that corporation, both in a federal and state uh, from a federal and state perspective. In a S corporation, you've got the same scenario, $60,000 salary, $20,000 of expense, 20 grand left. That 20 grand is going to flow through to you personally, is going to be added to, into your adjusted gross income calculation, and then down to your taxable income calculation, and is going to be taxed at the personal income tax level that you're at with all of your income combined. If that's the only income, then that's it. But if you've got interest income, if you've got payments from another business, if you've got rental income from properties and so forth, that would all be calculated in that picture. It gives you the same liability protection, but how the income flows through and whether it flows through to you works differently. So, so the S Corp kind of works like the LLC in that regard. And the C Corp works as a separate entity, both from a legal and income and taxation perspective. So it's important to understand the differences. And with the C Corp, you've got to file a separate tax return. So there's a cost in, uh, in doing that. And you know, that's part of what you have to consider. Whenever you have uh, an LLC, a corporation, or uh, an S corporation, or, or an S, a C corporation, you've also uh, got to pay the state, in, in this state anyway, in California, you've got to pay 800 bucks a year for the privilege of having one. Now, they'll waive that uh, fee for the first year. So, just think about that for a second, because if you do a corporation in September, you're going to have, let's say, September 2016. They're going to then waive 2016, but come early in 2017, you're going to owe the 800 bucks. In other words, you didn't get the full value of the free year. 
So if you're going to file a corporation, in my opinion, at this point in 2016, if you can, you may want to wait till the end of the year. There's a cutoff date, and I don't know exactly what it is this year, but it's usually toward the end of November that they will treat the corporation as if it kind of happened in 2017 if you do it toward the end of November. And then you will get the entire year of 2017 as your free year, and you won't have to pay the 800 bucks to California until 2018. So again, you've got to determine whether or not you can wait for the additional three months to be able to do your corporation at the end of the year and take advantage of that. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Uh, and it may not be worth, you know, the savings of 800 bucks to leave yourself open for the next three months. So, you know, again, talk to your folks, talk to your financial folks, your legal folks, your accounting folks, and make sure that they're giving you advice on, on how to best do that and what makes the most sense for you. And, of course, you can have multiple corporations and one can own the other and there's all sorts, I mean... I could talk to you about this for an hour, and somebody that really knows what they're doing could talk to you about this for three hours. So this is a much longer conversation, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an idea as to your options and what might work best for you given your situation. I'm certainly happy uh, to answer any questions uh, as and when you have them. Um, if I don't know the answers, I'm certainly able to refer you to a good attorney, a good accountant. Um, if you want to take a look at myllc.com, has got great information. Legalzoom.com has got great information. Uh, if you're a Legal Shield member, they have great information. So you know as well as I do, there's terrific information available to you uh, on the web. But at the end of the day, uh, I would generally recommend for you to use a professional counsel uh, to help you with those decisions. Uh, even even if you actually do the corporate uh, the incorporating online, um, I would recommend that you get your advice from an attorney and or an accountant. So again, uh, please go to Neils Deals N E I L Z D E A L Z dot com. Uh, subscribe, get a free report and and some other goodies that'll be coming to you uh, as you remain a member of that uh, elite group. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you as usual. This is Neil Palachi, Women's Money Coach with the Wealth Creator Company for Women. I hope you have a fantastic week. Signing off on the West Coast, California at 517. So we did pretty well there. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks.